Hello, this is Clint Halstead and this is Introduction to Microprocessors. We're using Tim Wilm Wilmshertz's book uh, called Designing Embedded Systems with PIC Microcontrollers. We're currently on Chapter 3.4, the PIC 16F84A Parallel Ports. Okay, so we discussed a little bit about uh, the basics of the parallel port. Now we're going to talk about specifically the 16F84A. Now we talked about before about there being some data registers, uh, some some data uh, special function registers, and a direction special function register. Now specifically, we're going to uh, label those as being uh, the port A and the port B and the trist A and the trist B. So um, the special function register port A is actually the the, the data. So uh, and the port B is the data for the B port. So we're going to call this data, okay? You address these through 0, 05 hex and 0, 06 hex. Now to get to the direction registers, so okay, so this will be direction. Then you go um, 85 hex and 86 hex, okay? So um, <clears throat> you set these either to ones or zeros to set the direction, either inputs or outputs. And you can check the data sheet on that to make sure you, you get the right polarity. Um, <clears throat> so the port special function registers can be seen in the memory map in the textbook as well. Um, also on the data sheet. Special function register named port X, where X is, is a variable here, in, in this case we're saying port you know, A, holds the uh, input output data for the port. So the port A, if, if you configure the direction here to be an input, then the, the values here, the zeros and ones here, are actually the inputs that are being read. And if this is configured as an, as an output, then you actually write the zeros and ones here to get uh, the data on the output. So here, so this register is going to have your zeros and ones in, inside of it, either read or written. And then your trist A is going to have you know zeros and ones depending on for your direction as well. So if you look at the uh, 16F84A chip, you'll see that it's a 18-pin device. You'll see that the, um, the, the port A ports um, are in this location. You'll see R, RA0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that means it has 5 bits. So the, it has 5 bits. Okay. Now the port B it has uh, 0 through 7, so that's 8, okay? So that's right here. Notice also that uh, some of the port A and the port B bits are multifunction. Notice that the, the, the port uh, A bit 4 is also shared with a clock. Also notice that uh, the port B bit 0, RB0, is shared with the interrupt. Okay, so uh, that's, a speci that's a special function on a multi-purpose pin. So we need to keep that in mind. Okay. Now let's look at the internal structure here and get a little bit more specific to the, to the PIC 16F84. Now we talked generically before about having data latch and direction latch. Well now it's called, as we talked about, it's called the TRIS. So the tri-state select, I guess you could call it, it's why they call it TRIS, it's a tri-state buffer select. Um, <clears throat> so they call it TRIS A and TRIS B, okay, for the data direction register. <clears throat> so here specifically for port B, we we're talking about port B, bits 0 through 3, um, we have a data latch here, that comes from the data bus, goes to the data latch. Also the data bus goes to the TRIS register so we can set um, our direction. So for example, let's say that we want this to be an output. Well, in order for this to be an output, we know that this buffer, this has to be a zero, okay, in order to enable this for an output. That means that the TRIS um, needs to be uh, set to a zero. So that would be the, the logic level encoding would be that you, you take a, uh, a zero on the data bus and you would write to the proper address. In this case it would be for port B 
it would be address tris b would be 86. So if you write to address 86 hex a zero, then you're going to get a zero here, you're going to, which is going to enable this um, as an output. And then you can go ahead and write go ahead and write your data. Uh, you put your zero or a one on your data bus, and then write to address 06. So if you write to address 06 hex, then that's going to represent that latch. 86 hex is going to represent this latch. Okay. So this would be your direction, direction, and then this would be your data. Okay. So your data. Also notice that there is an option. It's a uh, RPB pull-up resistor in the option register, which is kind of nice because you can actually add a pull-up, a weak pull-up resistor on this pin. See here? So this PMOS uh, acts as a, as a pull-up resistor. Okay? So um, that's kind of a nice feature to have sometimes if you want to have that. If you don't, then, then that's fine as well. But that's found in the option register. Go ahead and read the device data sheet to find out a little bit more about the option register. Also notice that there's um, <clears throat> this is we, we talked about the case of, of writing a zero or writing data uh, se selecting the data uh, the trist register to be an output but now let's talk about what if we want it to be an input. Well if we want it to be an input then this uh, trist register basically needs to be a, a one here instead of a zero a one will disable this, which will basically disconnect it, disconnect it from this uh, pin, the I/O pin, which this is called. Uh, let's just take an example here. Let's look at uh, RB zero. Let's say RB one. So let's call this RB RB one. So over here, this would be RB one, which would be pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, pin 7 of the actual device would be RB1, we call port B. Uh, so let's call this pin 7. So this is actually pin 7 on the microcontroller. So all this function circuit here is, is inside the, the microprocessor. Every bit of this is inside of the, the microprocessor, plus a lot of other things. And see, so this is the actual pin. So this pin goes to the ex external world here. Well, if we want to have an input, let's say that we have a, a logic one that we want to communicate to the ins inside of the data bus on the inside of the microprocessor. Well, then this needs to, this uh, trist latch needs to be set to a, instead of a zero, it needs to be set to a one. That that's the uh, code for uh, input. That will disable this buffer, uh, tri-state buffer, and will allow a data to come on in here, go through this TTL buffer, and then go to the next digital latch. Now notice that this one is latched, so when you do a read, when your read port goes low, okay, notice that this is going to go high, and it's going to latch the data in here on this, uh, on this uh, level, since it, this is a level sensitive latch, it's not uh, edge sensitive anymore, but it doesn't really matter. When this read signal is low, uh, then the enable will be high during that time, and it'll latch whatever data is there. So if this is a one at that time, it'll latch that one onto this uh, output. And then you will be able to a, uh, read that data on the internal data bus. So that data will go to the internal data bus. And this is your internal data bus. Okay. Notice how many connections are here on this data bus. It gives you the ability um, to Notice that you can also read the data on the TRIST register. If you if you want to read the data on the TRIST register, then you can issue a command for that, and you can see that here by the read TRIST command. That will enable this buffer. Of course, this buffer would have to be disabled. And then the data, you could read from the TRIST latch um, through here, and then we follow back onto the data bus. So you can see that you can uh, send data here on the data bus to the TRIST latch and the data latch, and you can read the trist output here and you can also read the input here. So you can see that these you got you basically have four connections. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's clear this a little bit. So let's see the four connections you got. This is the data bus. Okay. This is one connection. 
uh, this data goes into the latch, so that's writing. You got this connection writing the trist latch, which is the direction latch, and then you got two reading options. You can read here. Uh, this is the uh, trist uh, output, so you can actually read to make sure the trist value is what you want it to be. And you can also read the input from this input buffer here. So those are the four different options. One, two, three, four. Okay. Also, let's look at the input output characteristics of the uh, ports. When designing a microcontroller, Digital I.O. Need, uh, one needs to have an understanding of their electrical characteristics. The input of a logic gate or port pin requires the voltage to be below a certain maximum in order to be recognized as a logic zero or above a certain minimum to be recognized as a one. So on the data sheet you'll see these values called VIH and VIL. You need to know what these mean. It's called maximum input high voltage, maximum input low voltage. What this means is in order to be considered a low voltage, um, uh, you need to have a voltage of from zero to, to 0 0.8. So this value of 0 0.8 uh, is on the data sheet and it just means that in order for a signal to be considered low it needs to be between 0 and 0.8 okay so 0.8 basically is the maximum value that can be con to be considered low um, if you want to look at this on a <coughs> voltage kind of chart here if the voltage is anywhere between 0 and 0 0.8 then it's considered low okay now, so this is volts, and this here we can call this logic level. Okay, so any anywhere between zero and zero point eight would be low. Now, anything above two point four, everything in here, we're going to consider to be high. Okay. Now in here, this is the no man's land. Okay, say you can't be inside here. This is the no man's land. Anything inside here is, is going to be undefined. Okay, so if you're at one volt, then the, you're not going to know for certain whether it's going to be determined. It's going to be uh, de determined by the microprocessor to be either a one or a zero. So there's no way for the micro. There's no way for you as a designer to know what the microprocessor is going to read that value as. It could be either high or low, which means you definitely want to stay out of this, uh, this area from 0.8 to 2.4. So that's on the input. Now as far as the output goes, um, there's a, um, <coughs> you need to be, here's a chart for the logic high. So the output is going to be considered high if you have zero um, milliamps current then it's going to be considered high as a 3. Now you have max typical and min. You can see here that if you have more current, say you have 10, milli, 10 milliamps, then your your min, max, and typical are going to be quite a bit different. Okay, you can see here that the values are going to be about 0 0.8, um, 1 point, 1 1.8, this is just approximate and then over here you can see it's going to be about uh, 2.3 okay so that's how you read these charts in the data sheet so this is so obviously what that means is you want to you want to limit your output current you don't want to have that much output current what if you get too much current then your your voltage values are going to change significantly so you want to make sure you know maybe 1 milliamp to 5 milliamps would really be a good good range to to prevent from dropping out too much voltage. This is just a function of the fact that the output has a certain amount of resistance and you you want to be careful with how much you, you sink or source there. As far as the low goes, same thing. The output low value, um, the value that's going to be defined as low is going to be um, depending on the current. So if you have zero current then then the, the, the output low or the, the VOL we call it V output low is going to be zero volts, but if you have 10 milliamps, then it's going to be 0.6. It can be up to 0.6. And all this all this really means is that if you have a you know a buffer, it has a certain amount of resistance, and if if you're sinking current 
into that pin than uh, 10 milliamps, for example, then, um, <clears throat> and if this is your, this represents your uh, output buffer, and this could represent, you know, maybe zero, trying to be set to zero, but current's going to flow through this resistor R, and that's going to give you a voltage equals to I times R. Okay? So if you have a 1K resistance here, 1K resistance, um, with 10 milliamps, that's going to give you a voltage drop of 10 volts. Obviously, it's, the, the situation is not that bad. Uh, but let's say that maybe it's uh, 100, 100 ohms, then that would give you 1 volt. Okay, 10 milliamps times 1 would uh, <clears throat> 10. Uh, I'm sorry, 100 ohms times 10 milli would give you 1, 1 volt. So that's going to put you. Uh, so really for this one, that, that really means that this is more like a 60 ohms. 60 ohms would give you 0.6, 0 0.6. So really that means the output buffer has about 60 ohms of impedance. So we just kind of calculated that really quick. So that's kind of the situation there. Um, so we are done talking about parallel ports. Now the next section we're going to talk about is going to be the microcontroller oscillator. Thank you very much.